On November the 19th of 2021, the police in Sunrise, Florida, arrested a man by the name of Jean Similian, who was accused of attacking people at a local business. The suspect was handcuffed, but officers struggled to wrangle him into the back of the squad car. It was around that time that Sergeant Christopher Pulleys, a 21-year veteran of the force, arrived at the scene. Pulleys, with a can of pepper spray in hand, hurtled out of his vehicle and made a beeline towards Similian, who finally agreed to get into the car as the sergeant was swiftly approaching. Despite the suspect's newfound cooperation, Pulleys didn't relent as he subsequently berated and threatened the man. He repeatedly told Similian to look him in the eyes before stating he was the wrong cop to play with. The suspect appeared to relish the sergeant's aggression and proceeded to egg him on, saying, do what you gotta do, man. You gonna mace? Mace me. As Pulleys' profane threats continued, a female officer rushed up behind him and tugged on his belt, imploring him to ease off. At that point, Pulleys shifted his ire towards her, shouting, don't ever touch me again, as he reached out to grab her by the neck. With both hands wrapped squarely around his colleague's throat, the enraged officer pushed her back, then instructed everyone at the scene to turn off their body cameras. However, Pulleys' outburst up to that point had already been recorded in its entirety. Speaking to a local media outlet in the incident's aftermath, Sunrise Police Chief Anthony Rosa called Pulleys' behavior that day disgusting and unprofessional, saying the body cam video speaks for itself. In the summer of 2022, it was announced that the disgraced cop who'd already been relieved of supervisory duties and placed under internal investigation, was being criminally charged with felony battery, assault and tampering with evidence. The following November, police retired from the force amid his ongoing legal proceedings. Number 6. Andrew Lawson A pair of deputies from the Brevard County Sheriff's Office in Florida had their lives and careers irrevocably derailed as a result of an incredibly reckless decision made on December the 4th of 2022. In addition to being colleagues, deputies Andrew Lawson and Austin Walsh, both in their early 20s, were described as best friends and roommates. While off duty on the day in question, the two had been playing video games at their Palm Bay home but decided to take a break. Shortly thereafter, Lawson reportedly brandished a firearm and jokingly pointed it at Walsh. The former then pulled the trigger twice, erroneously believing the weapon to have been unloaded. Walsh was struck in the head by the bullet that was accidentally discharged, and although his panicked roommate immediately dialed 911, there was no chance of saving his life. The county sheriff said he was devastated upon receiving news of the incident, recalling his close relationships with both Walsh and Lawson. The latter was taken to the Brevard County Jail on manslaughter charges. He cooperated fully with the investigation, having been left distraught by his life-altering recklessness. After posting his $15,000 bail, Lawson moved back in with his mother while awaiting his next court appearance, slated for April of 2023. In the meantime, his employment with the Brevard County Sheriff's Office was terminated. Number 5. Nathaniel Hendren in January of 2019, St. Louis police officer Nathaniel Hendren and his partner were hanging out at his South City home, despite the fact that they were on duty and supposed to be patrolling elsewhere. They were joined by 24-year-old Caitlin Alex, a fellow St. Louis officer and married military veteran who was off duty at the time. According to subsequent reports, Hendren and Alex used the revolver to engage in a reckless game of Russian roulette. Hendren reportedly emptied the weapon, then placed a single bullet back into the cylinder and gave it a spin. He pointed the gun away from him and pulled the trigger to no effect. Alex subsequently took the revolver and aimed it at Hendren and pulled the trigger, but it once again did not fire. Then Hendren pointed it at Alex and again pulled the trigger, but this time the weapon discharged. The bullet struck the young woman in the chest and although the male officers rushed her to the hospital, she was later pronounced dead. While at the hospital, Hendren allegedly told his supervisor that the shooting was accidental and that he wouldn't want to harm Alex because he was in love with her and they were in an intimate relationship. He further indicated that they were planning on moving in together. Shortly after the incident, Hendren resigned from the force 
He also faced criminal charges of involuntary manslaughter to which he ultimately pleaded guilty. Hendron was consequently sentenced to seven years behind bars, a punishment Alex's mother felt was far too lenient. While speaking with the local press, the woman said he should have gotten life in prison if it was up to me. In November of 2022, Hendron was denied parole, forcing him to serve out his entire term. Number 4. Harlem Brawl in June of 2019, an alarming video surfaced online in which a pair of New York City police officers could be seen brawling with one another at the corner of West 116th Street and Lenox Avenue in Harlem. In the footage, two marked NYPD patrol cars, one with flashing lights, were shown parked along the side of the street. At one point, a uniformed officer emerged from the driver's seat of one of the vehicles and forcefully shoved another cop after which a scuffle ensued. As the warring colleagues continued grappling with one another, one of them pressed the other against the side of one of the parked SUVs. Other NYPD officers eventually stepped in to break up the fight. The incident sparked an internal department review, although it's unclear how the investigation played out and no details regarding what had triggered the dispute were made readily available to the public. Number 3. Aaron Wright Three officers from the Lafayette Police Department in Indiana were dispatched to a local residence in search of a wanted fugitive. On January 8th of 2019, although the suspect wasn't present at the home, the trio of officers, which included Lane Butler and her partner Aaron Wright, were met by a large and aggressive dog, prompting them to retreat outside. As they did so, however, Wright accidentally discharged his service weapon while following closely behind Butler, striking her in the shoulder. In body cam footage of the incident, Butler was shown collapsing to the ground immediately. While the third officer rushed over to tend to her, Wright flagged down another police car responding to the scene and placed his injured partner in the back seat. But an ambulance subsequently arrived to take her to the hospital. Although it wasn't visible in the video, the department later revealed that Wright had been attacked by the dog from behind, which allegedly caused the accidental discharge of his firearm. The Lafayette police chief said the incident hadn't been the result of an act of negligence, carelessness or otherwise reckless behavior, but rather an unfortunate sequence of circumstances. Butler, who was only days away from celebrating her third anniversary with the department, was brought to Franciscan Health Lafayette East in serious but stable condition. In a social media update posted about a week later, it was revealed that she'd been released from hospital. It was also reported that Wright wouldn't face disciplinary repercussions for his role in the accident. Number 2. Stephen Green and Joseph Tyler in the early hours of March 25th of 2016, a handful of officers from the Atlanta Police Department congregated for dinner at the R. Thomas restaurant in Buckhead at the end of a late night shift. According to a statement later released by a department spokesperson, two of the officers, later identified as Stephen Green and Joseph Tyre, started bantering back and forth about who would win in a foot race. Despite the seemingly trivial topic of conversation, tensions between the two men eventually escalated and Tyre threatened to punch Green in the face. The latter was initially taken aback by his colleague's hostility, but when Tyre issued a second threat, the two men came to blows and ultimately needed to be separated by the other officers. At some point during the altercation, Tyre allegedly pulled out his service weapon, but no shots were fired. Green, who'd been an Atlanta police officer for five years, was placed on administrative leave in the wake of the incident. Tyre, meanwhile, was also suspended, but subsequently resigned from the force five days later. Number 1. Ismael Tamayo a shooting at Stoddard Wells off-highway vehicle area, an unincorporated section of Apple Valley, California, was reported to the authorities during the early hours of May the 3rd of 2020. Deputies from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office subsequently arrived at the scene to find three off-duty Los Angeles police officers, one of whom was suffering from a gunshot wound to the upper body. The victim, Mark Mascherano, was airlifted to a nearby trauma center where he was reportedly kept in stable condition. The ensuing investigation uncovered that the man had been shot by his colleague, 44-year-old Ismael Tamayo, while they and an off-duty supervisor were shooting guns on a camping trip. Tomeo was initially arrested on attempted murder charges, but later pleaded not guilty to a felony count of assault with a firearm. His police powers were stripped pending the outcome of both his criminal proceedings as well as an internal administrative review. In April of 2021, an article in the LA Times went into great detail regarding Tomeo's documented mental health struggles. 
which was said to have played a large factor in the shooting. The man's attorney stated that at the time he fired his weapon at Mascherano, he was suffering from PTSD-related disassociation, which allegedly caused him to revert back to his military training, believing he was in a combat setting. The incident had also been precipitated by the trio of officers drinking copious amounts of alcohol for multiple hours, which was cited as another contributing factor. Number 8. Ray Tensing At about 6.30 p.m. on July the 19th of 2015, University of Cincinnati police officer Ray Tensing initiated a traffic stop for failure to display a front license plate on a vehicle driven by Samuel DeBose. Tensing activated his body camera prior to approaching the parked car. DeBose indicated that he was a licensed driver but added that he didn't have his identification card on him. Tenzin subsequently opened the driver's side door and ordered DeBose to remove his seatbelt. Rather than conform to the command, however, DeBose pulled the door shut and started the vehicle's engine. Tenzin then drew his service weapon and fired once through the driver's side window. The officer then fell away from the vehicle which began accelerating forward. Two additional members of law enforcement at the scene chased after the vehicle, but it eventually crashed into a telephone pole roughly 400 feet down the road. When the officers caught up to it, they discovered that DeBose had died from the gunshot Tenzin had fired, which had reportedly struck him in the head. In the incident's aftermath, Tenzin claimed to have discharged his weapon because his arm had gotten stuck inside the car, and he was thus afraid of being run over. His body cam footage, which was released by local authorities 10 days after the shooting, revealed that his arm hadn't, in fact, been caught in the vehicle. Prosecutors ultimately used the footage in their efforts to have him convicted on charges of murder and voluntary manslaughter. A grand jury initially indicted Tenzin on the aforementioned charges, and he was then fired from the University of Cincinnati Police Department, following a pair of trials that ended in hung juries in November of 2016 and May of 2017. The charges levied against Tenzin were dismissed with prejudice. Number 7. John Selker at around 8.22 p.m. on February the 4th of 2022, Purdue University student Adonis Tuggle was approached by a campus police officer who'd received a call about an alleged relationship violence incident. As was captured in a video recorded by Tuggle's girlfriend, Officer John Selker aggressively grabbed the young man, took him down and pinned him to the snow-covered ground. Tuggle claimed that Selker was choking him and his girlfriend protested what she'd regarded as a wildly unnecessary use of force on the officer's part. The young woman tapped Selker on the shoulder, at which point he reportedly threatened to shoot her with a taser if she touched him again. Upon the arrival of a second campus officer, the distressed girlfriend pleaded with him to stop Selker, whom she accused of taking it too far. Tuggle, a junior at Purdue's College of Health and Human Sciences, was eventually taken into custody on a charge of resisting arrest. That same night, he was released on a $250 bail, and he subsequently posted a video of his altercation with Selka to social media. In a statement released by the university in April of 2022, it was detailed how an external investigation into the matter by Indiana State Police had decided not to pursue criminal charges against Tuggle. The latter reportedly met with Officer Selka to reconcile their differences and further discuss the February incident, which the university called an aberration in regards to relations between the student body and the campus police department. Number 6. Andrew Mueller In the late evening hours of January the 26th of 2020, University of Cincinnati police officer Andrew Mueller was arrested by the Ohio State Highway Patrol at the scene of a traffic accident in Liberty Township. Not only had Mueller been responsible for the initial crash, but according to the resulting police report, it failed to yield to a responding officer, nearly causing another collision in the process. He allegedly displayed numerous signs of intoxication, including slurred speech and bloodshot eyes. It was also detailed how Mueller had trouble keeping his balance while interacting with the officers and allegedly emitted a strong odor of alcohol. He was uncooperative when asked that he undergo sobriety tests and was arrested on suspicion of operating a motor vehicle while under the influence of alcohol. 
a Butler County judge ultimately sentenced Mueller to 180 days in jail. Shortly thereafter, he resigned from the University of Cincinnati Police Force after being notified that he'd been recommended for termination. It subsequently emerged that Mueller's January arrest marked the third time in seven months that he'd been investigated for incidents where he'd been accused of alcohol abuse. In June of 2019, the officer had been suspended five days without pay for allegedly possessing a firearm at a Montgomery bar in direct violation of state law. Number 5. The Proviso West High School Incident On December the 10th of 2021, an unidentified school resource officer at Proviso West High School in Hillside, Illinois, was involved in a physical altercation with a student. As was captured by an eyewitness's cell phone camera, the officer had confronted the teenager at the front of a classroom. As the interaction became visibly more tense, the officer and the student traded shoves before the latter was pushed into several desks and brutally slammed to the ground. In the violent skirmish's wake, the school superintendent instructed his staff to contact the police and the resource officer was soon taken into custody. The Hillside Police Department told ABC7 Chicago that the assailant wasn't a registered law enforcement officer in the state of Illinois. The department's police chief also alleged that the school never completed a thorough background check to verify credentials required for the resource officer position upon interviewing the unnamed man. In a statement subsequently released to the public, school district officials indicated that the officer had been terminated from his position and wouldn't be allowed back on school grounds as a consequence for his assault of the student. Number 4. Valerie O'Brien Valerie O'Brien a former captain of the Michigan State University Police Department was arrested in the afternoon hours of February the 10th of 2021. Court records indicated that a Michigan State Police trooper had pulled up behind O'Brien's vehicle after the Ingham County Central Dispatch had aired a radio transmission indicating that she might be in need of car assistance. Shortly thereafter, the trooper noted that an extremely belligerent O'Brien was exhibiting clear signs of impairment. She was transported to Sparrow Hospital where a phlebotomist collected a blood sample from her. The resulting lab test revealed that the woman's blood alcohol content had been 0.25%, more than three times the legal driving limit in the state of Michigan. She was consequently taken into custody and charged with operating a motor vehicle with high blood alcohol content and carrying a concealed pistol while under the influence. In the wake of her arrest, O'Brien was placed on unpaid administrative leave with no assigned work duties and subsequently resigned from the department. In August of 2021, a judge sentenced O'Brien to one year of probation, 40 hours of community service, court-mandated counseling sessions and also ordered her to pay approximately $2,000 in fines and fees. Number 3. Scott Peterson Scott Peterson, a former sheriff's deputy from Parkland, Florida, was taken into police custody on June the 5th of 2019 on 10 counts of child neglect with bodily harm, three counts of culpable negligence and one count of perjury. Peterson's charges stemmed from the fact that he was the only resource officer present at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School during the 2018 shooting that had taken the lives of 17 students and faculty. According to a report released by the school's Public Safety Commission, 58-year-old Peterson had been in a position to engage the school shooter and reduce harm to others, but willfully decided not to do so. Prosecutors alleged that his inaction had directly influenced the number of victims and that the 32-year veteran should therefore be held criminally responsible for the extensive loss of life resulting from the shooting. Peterson's legal defense team contended that he hadn't been privy to specific aspects of the active shooter situation that might have allowed him to react more effectively. As per the officer's account of the incident, he was unaware whether the gunman was inside the building or firing at it from a distance and was thus unsure if he should enter the school. A Broward County judge ultimately ruled that Peterson's case would go to trial due to a piece of legislation that classifies school resource officers as caregivers for the students placed under their watch. The trial was scheduled to take place in the fall of 2022. Number 2. Israel Garcia a police campus officer at the University of California, Merced, was arrested on April the 11th of 2022 in connection to allegations of domestic violence and stalking. According to the Merced Police Department, Officer Israel Garcia 
had planted a GPS device inside of his ex-girlfriend's car in order to secretly keep track of her movements and whereabouts. In addition to stalking his former partner, 37-year-old Garcia had also allegedly assaulted her sometime after they'd ended their relationship in March of 2022. For his various misdeeds, the University of California Merced officer faced a host of criminal charges, including domestic violence, stalking, false imprisonment, assault, and unlawful use of an electronic tracking device to locate or track a person. Garcia was booked into the Merced County Jail pending the commencement of his case's legal proceedings. Number 1. Eddie Gonzalez Officers of the Long Beach Police Department in California responded to reports of a shooting near Millican High School on the afternoon of September the 27th of 2021. Upon their arrival, they discovered that 18-year-old Mona Rodriguez had been fatally shot by a Millican resource officer. According to the Long Beach Unified School District, the officer, later named as Eddie Gonzalez, had gone to investigate an altercation between Rodriguez and another female teenager. He then witnessed Rodriguez fleeing the scene of the alleged fight in the front passenger seat of a grey vehicle, on which he proceeded to open fire, hitting her in the head. The victim, reported as the mother of a five-month-old child, remained at Long Beach Memorial Care Hospital for several days following the incident. She failed to recover from her injuries and was ultimately taken off life support. On October the 27th of 2021, having already been fired by the school district in the wake of the shooting, 51-year-old Gonzalez was taken into police custody on suspicion of murder. During a hearing held on January the 19th of 2022, Superior Court Judge Daniel Lowenthal rejected the legal defense team's request to have Gonzalez's charge reduced from murder to manslaughter. It was also ruled that there was sufficient evidence for the case against the former school resource officer to proceed to trial. Number 8. Jacob Brown, Dakota DeMoss and George Harper Louisiana State Troopers Jacob Brown, Dakota DeMoss and George Harper were charged with misdemeanor simple battery in May of 2022, following the beating of a suspect two years prior. 29-year-old Antonio Harris had been stopped for a minor traffic violation. Law enforcement checked his information and discovered that he had a suspended driver's license and outstanding warrants. Harris re-entered his Hyundai Sonata while the troopers were distracted and fled. The ensuing chase spanned 29 miles recorded speeds of up to 150 miles per hour and ended after the police deployed a tire deflation device. The Sonata ended in a cornfield in rural Franklin Parish. Harris immediately got out and lay prone on the ground with his arms and legs extended. DeMoss was the first to arrive at the scene and as shown by court records, he struck Harris with his knee and slapped him several times in the face with an open palm before switching off his body cam. When Harper, then in his mid-twenties and Brown made their way to the scene, the former struck Harris with a fist reinforced by a flashlight while the latter pulled on his braids. The three officers maintained that Harris had kept resisting arrest, but a state police internal investigation subsequently determined that had never been the case. Moreover, the troopers had sought to conceal from investigators that there was body cam footage. The clips disproved their version of events as they indicated Harris had surrendered and wasn't a threat. In the ongoing case, evidence was also presented of a group text in which the officers had joked about the whooping and that it would give Harris nightmares for a long time. A message from Brown read, warms my heart knowing we could educate that young man. Each of the troopers faced up to six months in jail and a thousand dollar fine if found guilty. Number seven, Marquez Smith. Former Popeyes manager Marquez Smith was arrested in the city of Bainbridge, Georgia on Memorial Day 2022 for physically attacking a teenage employee during his time with the franchise. 20-year-old Smith had become enraged when the teenager attempted to clock out. As tensions escalated in the video recorded interaction, a male employee got between them. Smith and the teen continued the heated verbal exchange behind the counter before he suddenly slapped her across the face causing her to drop her phone. Smith then assumed a fighting stance and put his fists up, but the teen owner reacted to defend her face. Customers and staff intervened and, fortunately, no further incidents occurred. The video quickly went viral and Popeyes replied claiming they were absolutely horrified and that Smith had been terminated. 
from his position. He was arrested on several charges, including first-degree battery, and the court date was set for September the 6th. Number 6. James Pitts On October the 21st of 2010, Philadelphia jewelry store owner William Glatz was found gunned down in a failed robbery. Two men entered the store and a shootout ensued with 67-year-old Glatz, whose family had owned the business for roughly six decades. Both he and one of the robbers, 22-year-old Kevin Turner, who'd escaped from current Fromehold Correctional Facility nine days earlier, sustained fatal injuries. The other robber escaped but was later named as Obina Onyaya, a man with a violent criminal history who reportedly served prison terms in New Jersey for bank robberies. He confessed to the robbery and was convicted of second-degree murder, for which he was sentenced to life in prison. Onyaya spent roughly 11 years of this term before it was concretely proven that he'd had nothing to do with the robbery and Glatz's murder. The District Attorney's Office Conviction Integrity Unit had examined witness testimony and relied on the analysis of multiple forensic experts who determined that Turner's accomplice had been shorter than 5 foot 11 inches, while on Yaya was 6 foot 3 inches. Another pivotal piece of evidence was something that on Yaya and his legal defense had always maintained, namely that the confession had been beaten out of him. Veteran homicide detective James Pitts was accused of employing several coercive tactics during interrogation, such as striking the man with a closed fist and forcefully pushing his head between his legs. The detective then lied about his violent methods. As of March 2022, a grand jury recommended he be charged with two counts of perjury and three counts of obstructing the administration of law. The case against the officer was ongoing, but by then, Onyaya had already been cleared of all the charges against him. Number 5. Frank Hernandez On April the 27th of 2020, LAPD officer Frank Hernandez was caught on video savagely beating an unnamed homeless man who'd been accused of trespassing in Boyle Heights. Hernandez and his partner had responded to the call and spotted the man setting up his tent in a vacant lot adjacent to a church. As shown in cell phone footage, Hernandez proceeded to land over a dozen hard punches to the man's head and body as he appeared to be neither armed nor resisting arrest. The 28-year-old victim suffered abrasions but wasn't reported to have required hospitalization. The incident didn't meet the standards requiring the LAPD to release body cam video but its dissemination was eventually ordered in mid-May after the cell phone footage had sparked outrage online. This is a disturbing case of the illegal use of force at the hands of a police officer. District Attorney Jackie Lacey told the media Hernandez was charged with one felony count of assault under color of authority, to which he pleaded not guilty while defending his tactics as appropriate for the situation. Number 4. Tanya Ramirez In January of 2016, a former teacher at a high school in Corpus Christi, Texas, pleaded guilty to a second-degree felony charge of improper relationship between an educator and student. 30-year-old Tanya Ramirez had been arrested in 2014 amidst accusations of being involved with a male student in his late teens while working at King High School. After they'd exchanged flirtatious texts for several weeks, Tristan Price had gone to her house. On May the 30th, in the early hours of the morning and while inebriated, the two became intimately engaged and Price recorded the act on his cell phone. News of the improper relationship began to spread and reached local police, whom Price eventually provided with a video showing a woman with an 8-inch tattoo on her lower back, identified as Ramirez. The teacher surrendered to the authorities and was promptly fired from her job. She was further accused of having been involved with a second unnamed student, aged the same as Price, a charge to which she pleaded no contest. Following a plea deal, Ramirez was given seven years of probation and didn't have to register as an offender because both victims had met the legal age of consent. During the course of her trial, she filed a lawsuit against Price, accusing him of extreme and outrageous conduct for secretly recording their tryst and then showing the video to his friends. 
The former teacher claimed that he'd done so to earn bragging rights and that it had contributed to him becoming more popular and eventually being voted homecoming king. The suit also accused the student's mother of defamation after she'd allegedly called Ramirez a predator. The public showdown between Ramirez, Price, and his mother was the subject of an episode of the Dr. Phil show. It featured a moment when the mother contradicted the former teacher's statements that the video had gone viral by saying, it wasn't that good, it was only 10 seconds, baby, triggering peals of laughter from the studio crowd. Number 3. Patricia Coley The 22-year-old manager of an Indiana Wendy's was arrested in September of 2021 for assaulting a teenager under her supervision. Patricia Coley was on duty on July the 29th when an argument erupted between her and a younger female employee. The victim tried to walk to the back door of the Mishawaka area restaurant during the row when Coley charged her from behind. The manager punched her in the back of the head and pulled her hair before dragging her to the ground where the attack continued. Coley was also reported to have bitten deeply into the worker's left hand. During her onslaught, the victim was treated for the bite and a possible concussion, while Coley was arrested on September the 6th and faced charges of battery and disorderly conduct. Number 2. Olivia Orts In late spring of 2022, Olivia Orts' husband returned to their Pennsylvania home from a trip to Florida and discovered a series of messages on his wife's iPad. They suggested that 26-year-old Orts had been intimately involved with one of her students at the Wilmington Area High School, where she worked as a choir director. The man also worked for the school, setting up stage events, such as plays and musicals, and was obligated under state law to report any instance of abuse, misconduct, or exploitation. He alerted the school's administration and Orts was suspended before a warrant was issued for her arrest in early May. In spite of her looming legal troubles, the woman didn't immediately turn herself in to the police and even sang in a local concert over the weekend. She eventually surrendered at the advice of her attorney. The resulting investigation revealed that she and an unnamed female student had initially started texting each other in and out of school. Orts then invited the student to her home while her husband was away. The teenager told detectives that she and the woman had snuggled on the couch and watched TV before they eventually went to the bedroom and became intimate. They met and spent the night together on several subsequent occasions, and the teen even visited the teacher to comfort her when her husband found out about the illicit relationship. The student maintained that she and Orts were in love but the latter was arrested on multiple charges, including two counts of intercourse contact with a school student and criminal use of a communication facility. The arrest made headlines, particularly since her music director predecessor, 37-year-old Jonathan Priano, had been arrested on similar charges of having had inappropriate contact with students throughout his tenure. Number 1. Shauna Bishop Shauna Bishop, a former sheriff's deputy from Sacramento County, California, was sentenced to a year in jail and five years probation in 2020 after she'd admitted to have had illicit relations with a male teenager. The incident had occurred in April of the previous year. Bishop then, in her mid-40s, had ended her year-long relationship with a man who worked for the same department. The fellow officer had told his ex-wife that he was uncomfortable with the way in which Bishop behaved around their son. As detailed in court documents, however, the ex-wife and the deputy were friends, and she invited her to spend the night at her home. On April the 28th of 2019, the woman had asked Bishop, an authority figure, to speak to the teen about his drug and alcohol use. That night after the mother had fallen asleep, Bishop went to his room, where they had intercourse and other intimate relations. After a few weeks, the teen disclosed the incident to his 19-year-old sister, who in turn told their mother. The latter alerted the police, and an investigation was launched, during the course of which Bishop resigned before being taken into custody in June. The teen's parents alleged that Bishop had taken advantage of her position of power and groomed him. Leading up to her guilty plea, she'd tried blaming her actions on side effects of the sedative Ambien, 
which both she and the boy's mother had taken before going to bed on the night. In addition to her sentence, the disgraced deputy also had to register as an offender. Number 8. Matthew Ward An off-duty Tennessee police officer was involved in a road rage incident on June 13th of 2021. The episode began on Interstate 24 in Rutherford County when 31-year-old Matthew Ward allegedly witnessed another motorist speeding. Despite being off-duty at the time, Ward pursued the vehicle and produced his deshered police badge, motioning for the driver to slow down. According to Patrol Captain William Travis of the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office, the two exchanged words, and Ward then followed the man onto Medical Center Parkway at Silo Hill Lane, reaching speeds of up to 120 miles per hour in the process. After exiting the interstate, the two men got out of their vehicles. In the ensuing confrontation, Ward reportedly pulled out his police-issued handgun and pointed it at the other motorist, identified as Ilya Kovalchuk. The off-duty officer was heard telling Kovalchuk that he's on duty 24-7 before ordering him to get on the ground. A group of onlookers who recorded the altercation with their cell phones subsequently called 911. Patrol Captain Travis was called to the scene whereupon he placed Ward under arrest for aggravated assault. He was booked at the Rutherford County Adult Detention Center before being released on a $5,000 bond. In the immediate wake of the road rage incident, Ward was suspended from the Deshert Police Department without pay. However, the man who'd only been a police officer for a few months before his arrest ultimately resigned from his post a couple days later. Number 7. Cedria McWilliams On the morning of October the 9th of 2020, the police in Montgomery, Alabama, were called to the 100 block of East Salem Drive for a report of domestic violence. Upon their arrival, law enforcement learned that the individual accused of violence was off-duty Montgomery officer Cedria McWilliams, aged 24. According to official documents on the incident, McWilliams had gotten into her boyfriend's car and rammed it into her own Jeep Patriot while the couple's 10-month-old child was inside. The collision caused considerable damage to the bumper, hood, and headlights of the man's vehicle. Following the crash, McWilliams reportedly got out of the car and struck the victim with a baseball bat. He grabbed the off-duty officer's arm to keep her from swinging, at which point she sank her teeth into the left side of his chest. McWilliams subsequently got back into her boyfriend's vehicle, collided with the Jeep for a second time, then fled the scene. She was taken into custody that afternoon on charges of domestic violence, criminal mischief, assault, and reckless endangerment. In the aftermath of her arrest, McWilliams was relieved of duty and placed on administrative leave pending further investigations. Number 6. Adrian Scott Oars The police in Cincinnati, Ohio, were notified of what was described as an active shooter situation. In the early morning hours of July the 30th of 2016, the incident had begun more than 100 miles northwest in Indianapolis, where local police were called to the scene of a domestic violence complaint. Upon their arrival, law enforcement learned that an unidentified woman had allegedly been harmed by her estranged husband, 42-year-old Adrian Scott Oars. The latter, an 18-year veteran of the Indianapolis police force, had left the scene before officers arrived, but returned a short time later and opened fire on his colleagues. The police returned fire, but Orr subsequently fled the scene and made his way to Cincinnati. Shortly after midnight, Orr's was located on the Brent Spence Bridge with a Glock Model 27 in his car. Traffic on the bridge was stopped for more than an hour while the Cincinnati police SWAT team was locked in a standoff with the suspect. Oars was ultimately taken into custody on a charge of attempted murder in connection to the non-fatal shooting of an Indianapolis detective. In March of 2018, a few months after his employment with the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department was terminated, Oars was sentenced to 12 years in prison, followed by one year in community corrections. Number 5. Pierre Tyler 29-year-old mother of two, Andris Wofford, was found dead inside her Chicago apartment 
on the morning of December the 6th of 2021, after police were asked to perform a welfare check on her. Upon reviewing surveillance footage, investigators learned that at about 9 p.m. the previous night, Wofford's boyfriend, Pierre Tyler, had exited her apartment with a firearm holstered on his back. The man, a five-year veteran of the Chicago police force, provided his colleagues with an alibi claiming to have been leaving Wofford's apartment to meet with a confidential informant. However, Tyler's partners indicated that it would be highly unusual and against police protocol to meet with an informant alone and in one's personal vehicle. When interviewing the victim's neighbors, detectives learned that the couple had gotten into a loud argument that night that culminated with a loud, muffled bang, after which the yelling ceased. It was also determined that the shell casings found at the crime scene matched those found in the officer's gun range bag. Tyler was thus taken into custody on suspicion of murdering his girlfriend. It subsequently emerged that Wofford had confronted the off-duty officer about claims that he'd had a child with another woman, which led to the altercation that ultimately turned deadly. The man was denied bail while being held in Cook County Jail on a charge of first-degree murder. Number 4. Eric Welch In 2022, officers from the Arlington County Police Department in Virginia opened up a narcotics investigation after learning that an individual was selling cocaine in the area. Detectives ultimately identified 33-year-old Eric Welch, a Pentagon Force Protection Agency police officer, as a suspect in the case. Welch was subsequently observed purchasing narcotics for the purpose of distribution and was thus taken into custody in the 1300 block of South Scott Street on October the 28th. For the illicit drug operation he was running while off duty, the federal officer faced charges of possession with intent to distribute a controlled substance and possession with intent to distribute a controlled substance while armed. Authorities obtained a search warrant for Welch's home, inside of which they recovered more narcotics as well as guns. He was booked into the Arlington County Detention Center and held without bond. Number 3. Stephanie Carabajal In the late evening hours of October the 29th of 2019, Central Dispatch operators received a call about a blue pickup truck blocking an intersection in Las Cruces, New Mexico. The driver of the vehicle, a young female, was reportedly asleep at the wheel. The woman eventually woke up, at which point she got onto the eastbound lanes of Highway 70 and began driving erratically while traveling at about 10 miles per hour in the right-hand lane. New Mexico State Police Officer Gustavo Avina was called to assist Las Cruces Police Officer Kevin Martinez with the ensuing traffic stop, which was conducted after the female motorist fell asleep once again near the highway's Mesa Grande exit. Officer Martinez noted that the engine was still running when he approached the vehicle, which smelled strongly of alcohol. He reportedly recognized the driver as Stephanie Carabajal, a fellow Las Cruces police officer. When the 26-year-old woman woke up again, she was slurring her speech. Her eyes were bloodshot and watery, and she too emitted a strong odor of alcohol. She allegedly told the officers that she was parked on the road because the driver of the vehicle had gotten out and left, but she couldn't remember who it was. Carabajal refused a breathalyzer test before being taken to a Doña Ana County detention center on a charge of aggravated DUI. She was subsequently placed on administrative leave before eventually being terminated from the force. In May of 2021, nearly 600 days after her arrest, it was reported that the charges levied against Carabajal had been dismissed by a judge who cited violations of her right to a speedy trial. Number two, Michael Vitellaro. An off-duty police officer was charged with aggravated battery and official misconduct following an incident that occurred outside a Starbucks in the Chicago suburb of Park Ridge on July the 1st of 2022. Subsequent reports on the matter reveal that a 14-year-old boy by the name of Josh Neves had been attempting to move a bicycle left on the sidewalk out of his path when he and his friends were approached by Chicago policeman Michael Vitellaro, who wasn't on duty at the time. 
As captured on cell phone video by nearby witnesses, 49-year-old Vitalaro grabbed Neves and threw him to the ground before digging his knee into the young teen's back to keep him restrained. As Neves' friends looked on in horror, the officer told them that the boy had been trying to steal his son's bike. The teens denied the accusation, indicating that he'd simply been moving it out of his way. Four Park Ridge officers were dispatched to the scene after receiving reports of a fight in progress, but no arrests were made. When video footage of the incident surfaced on social media, the Chicago Police Department opened up an internal investigation into the off-duty officer's actions. Vitalaro turned himself in after criminal charges were filed against him. As of the case's latest developments, the man had been relieved of his police powers. He entered a not guilty plea to his charges while Neves' family publicly announced their intentions to file a lawsuit. Number 1. David Hall Dixon At about 5 a.m. on April the 7th of 2021, the police in Tacoma Park, Maryland, were dispatched to the scene of a reported shooting at Tacoma Overlook Condominiums on New Hampshire Avenue. Responding officers encountered a man by the name of David Hall Dixon, an off-duty Pentagon Force Protection Agency officer who claimed to witness an attempted carjacking. Dixon indicated that he'd engaged the suspects, two of whom were subsequently taken to Prince George's Hospital Center with gunshot wounds. 32-year-old Dominique Williams and 38-year-old James Lionel Johnson later succumbed to the injuries inflicted by the off-duty officer. 36-year-old Michael Thomas, the driver of the vehicle that Dixon claimed was being stolen, survived the shooting but wasn't ultimately charged with any crime. Surveillance video recovered from the scene showed Dixon firing multiple rounds into the car as it was driving away. He faced several charges, including two counts of second-degree murder, two counts of use of a handgun, and reckless endangerment. Dixon was placed on administrative leave pending an internal investigation into the matter. Following a COVID-19-related delay, his criminal trial was scheduled to begin in February of 2023. Number 8. Christy Roots Florida police officer Christy Roots was fired from the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department after being arrested for driving under the influence. The 41-year-old lieutenant, who'd been on the force since 1998 prior to her dismissal, had reportedly honked her horn several times for unknown reasons while driving in reverse on the roadway on March the 18th of 2018. Officers responded to the scene after receiving a 911 call about a disturbance, and they immediately noted that Roots' eyes were glassy and bloodshot. She initially refused to provide her fellow officers a breath sample, but eventually relented when informed she was required to comply as an employee of the sheriff's office. The breathalyzer indicated her blood alcohol level was 0.14, nearly twice as high as the legal limit in the state of Florida. Number 7. Stacy Lyons On October the 28th of 2016, only hours after arresting a man for domestic violence, as part of an episode of the reality TV show Live PD, Connecticut police officer Stacy Lyons was detained for the very same charges. During the episode in question, a suspect was taken into custody after allegedly choking his girlfriend at their shared Trumbull apartment. Lyons attempted to reason with the individual, urging him to surrender all his weapons while explaining that domestics are the most dangerous calls a police officer can go on. Soon after filming of the show was wrapped, local police received a call from Lyons' former boyfriend, who reported that she'd broken into his home by using his old security code. The 33-year-old officer then angrily confronted her ex about dating another woman. Responding officers noted a cut to the former boyfriend's arm and nose, and the unnamed man explained that he'd broken up with Lyons two weeks earlier. She was forced to surrender her service weapon and was subsequently put on administrative leave pending an investigation. In December of 2016, Judge Kevin Doyle dismissed the charges against Lyons after she completed a family violence counseling program, shortly after which she was reinstated to the force. Number 6. Stephanie Rogina On August the 26th of 2016, police recruit 
Stephanie Rogina led officers on a high-speed chase through Flemington, New Jersey. The 26-year-old woman had been sitting in her car at an intersection for over a minute and a half before speeding away as a patrol car approached with its lights activated. A dash cam recording of the incident released to the public about a year later showed Rogina swerving repeatedly before finally pulling over to the side of the road. Lieutenant Scott Crater, who subsequently made the arrest, noted that the recruit displayed clear signs of intoxication. Rogina attempted to use her badge number to avoid arrest and seemed stunned when Crater handcuffed her, but the lieutenant responded that as an officer, she should have known better. The woman was immediately suspended without pay and charged with reckless driving, leaving the scene of an accident and obstructing the passage of other vehicles. Presiding Judge Angela Bukowski penalized the defendant with a non-custodial sentence, meaning Rogina was required to pay a fine and report to a probation officer in lieu of jail time. Number 5. Michael D'Amelio and Sarah Laudano Police officers Michael D'Amelio, aged 38, and Sarah Laudano, aged 31, were supposed to be on duty in the early hours of October the 10th of 2020, however, neither of them responded to emergency calls to their radios, prompting an investigation into their whereabouts. Witnesses claimed that the Connecticut officers had been drinking at a nearby restaurant before the start of their shift. Once they reported for service, they allegedly continued to binge drink at the police headquarters parking lot, along with several co-workers. Additionally, it was reported that Lord Dano had been smoking THC while dropping her son off at a friend's apartment earlier that night. The pair headed over to a hotel and booked a room where they remained for the entire duration of their shifts. Their location was discovered thanks to the patrol car's automatic vehicle locating system, and they were subsequently deemed unfit for service. An official inquiry was launched into the matter before the officers willingly surrendered themselves and admitted to their affair. Three months after the incident, Lord Dano and D'Amelio were charged with second-degree larceny and second-degree reckless endangerment. Lord Dano also faced accusations of risking injury to a child for exposing her son to her illicit activities. Number 4. Lacey Fields 23-year-old policewoman Lacey Fields was arrested after assaulting a uniformed officer at a Louisiana restaurant while off duty on May the 6th of 2018. Police arrived at the Alexandria IHOP after receiving reports of a disturbance at the establishment. After initiating an altercation with her fellow law enforcement professionals, Fields was taken outside, whereupon the fight reportedly continued. When one of the officers attempted to pull the off-duty officer away, she attacked him before finally being subdued and handcuffed. Although she wasn't arrested on the day the confrontation took place, Fields was eventually taken into custody on May the 22nd of that same year. She was put on administrative leave and charged with battery on a police officer and resisting an officer with violence. Number 3. Aaron Dean after becoming a suspect in a murder investigation, Texas police officer Aaron Dean resigned from the force and refused to cooperate with detectives. On October the 12th of 2019, Dean had reportedly responded to an open structure call. Such incidents can involve anything from an unlocked front door to burglary and home invasion. The 35-year-old officer, who had been a member of the department for fewer than 24 months, approached the building at about 2.30 a.m. Noticing a person moving behind one of the windows, Dean demanded the individual put up their hands. Instead of waiting for a response, he shot in the direction of the figure without properly identifying himself as an officer. The incident was recorded by Dean's body cam, although the feed was cut after the gun was fired. The identity of the victim was subsequently revealed to be the property's resident, Atatiana Jefferson. The 28-year-old woman had been playing video games with her nephew, Zion Carr, just before the unprompted attack. Police Chief Ed Krauss told the press that Dean would have been dishonorably discharged had he not quit 48 hours later. After his criminal trial was delayed several times due to administrative issues, recusals and appeals, 
The case's latest presiding judge, George Gallagher, scheduled jury selection for November the 28th of 2022. Number two, Sam Dobbins. Mississippi Police Chief Sam Dobbins was fired from his post after recordings of him making racist declarations surfaced to the public. Fellow officer Robert Hooker had decided to document Dobbins' slurs and insulting remarks during a conversation that took place in April of 2022. Hooker, a 20-year veteran of the force, confronted Dobbins after an incident in which the chief had told him to shut the F up and listen. In the tape, Dobbins can also be heard telling his subordinate that if words had such an effect on him, the police force might not be the best place for him. Dobbins had been appointed as chief in Lexington, a town with an 85% black population, in July of 2021. During the 19 minutes of recorded conversation, he repeatedly used racial slurs, bragged about killing 13 people in the field, and laughed when recounting a pursuit during which he shot at a suspect 119 times. While Dobbins claimed he wasn't aware the conversation was being documented, Hooker stated the phone he used to make the recording was in plain sight. After quitting his job, Hooker was interviewed by CNN, during which he said that he was appalled by the words Dobbins had used and added, I have heard rougher words, but not from my leader. The department's new chief, Charles Henderson, indicated that his administration would have zero tolerance for racism. Number 1. Oscar Mayorga On July the 4th of 2022, Florida police officer Oscar Mayorga was arrested for driving under the influence. The 25-year-old, who had been in the force for five years, had been dressed in his uniform and was driving a marked police vehicle while intoxicated. He was stopped when his fellow Eustace officers noticed he'd been driving recklessly, and it was subsequently discovered that he'd been carrying an open alcoholic beverage container in his cup holder. The drunken officer attempted to explain away his slurred speech by claiming that he suffered from frequent seizures and had taken a Benadryl hours prior to the incident. However, a breathalyzer test revealed his blood alcohol level to be 0.39, with the state's legal limit being 0.08. Mayorga was consequently put on administrative leave pending an official investigation into his misconduct. Number 9 55-year-old Pamela Shonin, a retired Las Vegas police officer, murdered her son-in-law after he attempted to visit his estranged wife and son on April the 22nd of 2019. Shonin, who asked the court to address her as Pamela Renee Bordeaux shot 23-year-old Sean Babbitt 10 times in the head and the torso. The young man had been visiting his estranged wife and their young child in a supervised setting. They'd already left the room when Shonin confronted him. The autopsy revealed that Babbitt had attempted to cover himself during the attack, resulting in several of his fingers being blown off. Allegedly, the former officer had been triggered by her son-in-law's intention to request an increase in his weekly visitation time with his son. No further information has been released to the media regarding the case as of December of 2022. Number 8. Kevin Canty Retired New York policeman Kevin Canty murdered his wife, Jessica, on April the 19th of 2014 in a fit of jealousy. 44-year-old Canty who'd left the force due to disability, had reportedly known the victim since high school. Believing she'd been unfaithful to him, he fired 10 shots at her with a 9mm pistol in front of two of their children, aiming for her stomach, breasts, and arm. A neighbor called 911 after the children ran from the family house, screaming that their father had killed their mother. Shortly after the murder, Canty turned himself into the police, telling the arresting officer he was sorry but calling his wife a whore for cheating on him. Neighbors interviewed by detectives described the shooter as a violent man who often fought with his wife. Canty pleaded guilty to manslaughter on November the 17th of 2015 and was consequently sentenced to 25 years in prison. Number 7. Brenton M. Hodge Retired police officer Brenton M. Hodge used his old badge to try to get out of a DUI in Flagler County, Florida, on May the 5th of 2019. 55-year-old Hodge had been traveling down US Route 1 
when he was rear-ended by another driver. The deputy that arrived at the scene immediately noticed the smell of alcohol, but Hodge quickly flashed his deactivated badge in an attempt to avoid being searched. The deputy searched the former officer nevertheless and found illicit substances hidden under his clothes. He was arrested for drunk driving and drug possession. A witness interviewed by police reported seeing Hodge come to a stop in the middle of the street as he attempted to make a U-turn moments before the crash. Eric Ashley Jr., the individual who accidentally plowed into Hodge's car, attempted to swerve out of the way but was unable to when the retired officer suddenly shifted lanes. In certain states, police officers must observe a person for 20 minutes before administering a breathalyzer test. During this waiting period, however, Hodge placed his fingers into his mouth and eventually, arresting officers considered his attitude and behavior a refusal to be tested. Number 6. Theodore Young Theodore Young, a former police sergeant from Pleasanton, California, was charged with DUI and murder following a fatal accident on January the 22nd of 2022. Young, who was 63 at the time of his arrest, had already pleaded guilty to a separate DUI five years prior to the latest incident. He was accused of drunkenly driving his truck across the road into oncoming traffic, causing a head-on collision with 27-year-old Rebecca Gall's car. Although the accident took place on January the 18th, Gall died from her injuries three days later, leading to Young being charged with gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated and murder, along with DUI with blood alcohol above 0.08% and DUI causing serious injuries. Number 5. William Beatty On November the 28th of 2022, William Beatty, a retired police officer, murdered his ex-girlfriend, Erin Gattier, at her New Jersey home before fatally turning the gun on himself. The former couple, both of whom were 47 years old at the time of their deaths, were survived by a pair of sheer children. Beatty had retired from the force a decade prior due to a disability caused by an unspecified accident, moments after the shots were fired. Police arrived at the scene to conduct a welfare check, discovering both bodies. An autopsy and forensic investigation at the crime scene allowed detectives to determine that Beatty had broken into his ex-girlfriend's home moments before the attack. Family and friends of the victim revealed that Beatty had been highly controlling and wouldn't allow Gattier to speak to people he perceived as threats to their relationship. Number 4. Jerome Felipe Jerome Felipe, a retired police officer from New York, was arrested in Washington, D.C. on June 3, 2022, after walking outside the Capitol building carrying a BB gun, ammo, and a fake badge. The 53-year-old man, who was also wearing body armor, showed officers a badge indicating he worked for the Department of Interpol. Though at first he claimed to have been driving to his grandmother's funeral, he later changed his story, stating he was in the capital to receive a medal from the Presidential Service Center. Felipe gave arresting officers permission to search his car, in which they found a large amount of ammo. He was charged with unlawful possession of high-capacity magazines and unregistered ammo. Felipe later claimed he'd been attempting to take pictures in front of the building and had accidentally given officers the fake badge instead of his business cards due to exhaustion. He further blamed his arrest on the Capitol being on high alert following the riot in January of 2021. Number 3. Stephen Johnson On November the 23rd of 2022, retired policeman Stephen Johnson and an accomplice named Glenn Fenwick were formally charged with the murder of Christopher Jarvis, a resident of Wangoom, Australia, who'd gone missing 16 years earlier. Police found Jarvis's torched vehicle on June the 13th of 2006 with no sign of his whereabouts. The cold case was reopened in 2022 after an anonymous source offered detectives new information, which led to the arrests of Johnson and Fenwick aged 70 and 59 respectively. No further details regarding Jarvis's death or the new evidence uncovered had been released to the public as of the latest available updates. Number 2. Sirafop Wong Mackett 42 year old Sirafop Wong Mackett was arrested on November the 16th of 2022 for throwing six M67 grenades at the neighbor's home in Yubon, Ratchathani, Thailand. The attack 
which took place on April the 23rd of that same year, injured three people and led to Wong Mackett being expelled from the force. He'd allegedly been drunk at the time of the incident, which inflicted damage to several motorcycles as well. The man went into hiding after learning that a warrant had been issued for his arrest. Wong Mackett was found at a nearby resort where he did not resist arrest and according to officers at the scene admitted to the crime upon being booked. As of the latest developments, the case's legal proceedings were still ongoing. Number 1. Nicholas Tartaglioni 49-year-old Nicholas Tartaglioni, a retired New York police officer, was charged with the murders of four individuals seven months after their disappearances on April the 11th of 2016. A day following his arrest on December the 20th, investigators found the bodies of Martin Luna, Miguel Luna, Urbano Santiago and Hector Gutierrez buried in the backyard of a home Cartaglioni had been renting at the time. According to prosecutors, the motive for the crime was linked to illicit substances and money Martin Luna allegedly owed him. The three other victims, Luna's nephew, his niece's fiance, and a close friend, had reportedly been collateral damage. According to the prosecution's working theory, which changed since the initial arrest. The suspect used a zip tie to fatally strangle Luna while the others were shot in the head, potentially by Tartaglioni's associates. He pleaded not guilty to each of his charges and was ordered to remain behind bars until his trial. Before Jeffrey Epstein's first attempt on his life in 2019, Tartaglioni shared a cell with the infamous financier, although prosecutors initially sought the death sentence. They ultimately decided against the capital case. Tartaglioni's trial date was scheduled for March the 13th of 2023. Number 8. Sean Lucas On October the 3rd of 2020, Texas police officer Sean Lucas gunned down 31-year-old Jonathan Price an African-American man during a disturbance call to his home in Wolf City. Upon his arrival at the scene, 22-year-old Lucas encountered an allegedly intoxicated Price, who approached him with his arm extended in front of him. The officer later indicated that he'd felt threatened by the homeowner's disposition and thus attempted to restrain him before pulling out his taser. When Price began walking away, Lucas tried to activate the taser, but it failed to deploy. Price then grabbed the end of the weapon, as was captured by the policeman's body cam. Lucas proceeded to fatally shoot the resident four times. Price, who'd consequently been rendered unconscious, was rushed to the Hunt Regional Medical Center in nearby Greenville. All attempts to revive him proved unsuccessful. Lucas was immediately terminated from the police department and charged with murder in connection to the incident. His trial was delayed due to COVID-related issues and Judge Kelly Aiken scheduled the first hearing for May the 19th of 2022. As of latest updates, it's unclear what stage the case's legal proceedings had reached. Number 7. Jason McIntosh Ex-Alabama law enforcement officer Jason McIntosh beat and murdered his estranged wife, Megan Montgomery. In December of 2019, the man had reportedly resigned from the police force following a previous incident in which he'd shot Montgomery in the arm while they struggled over his gun. In the aftermath, McIntosh blamed his wife for the violent altercation after which the woman obtained a restraining order against him. Shortly thereafter, Montgomery took further steps to distance herself from McIntosh by filing for divorce, to which the latter responded with vengeful anger. The disgraced police officer followed the 31-year-old woman to a bar and frog-marched her out to the parking lot. After being dragged into his car, Montgomery was driven to a secluded spot where McIntosh beat her before shooting her in the head, inflicting immediate mortal wounds. During the ensuing homicide investigation, detectives quickly zeroed in on the victim's husband as a suspect, given the couple's violent history, as well as the testimony of witnesses who'd been at the bar with Montgomery on the night of the murder. On March the 30th of 2021, McIntosh accepted a deal with the prosecutor to avoid facing the death penalty. He pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and was consequently sentenced to 30 years in prison. Number 6. Courtney Brown and Christy Wilson Georgia police officers Courtney Brown and Christy Wilson were fired after displaying inappropriate behavior during a routine traffic stop on April the 7th of 2019. According to subsequent reports, Sarah Webb had been stopped by the officers, who were partners, for allegedly speeding. 
As was recorded by Brown and Wilson's police body cameras, the women openly discussed the fact that they had neither tickets left to issue nor the appropriate device to calculate how fast Webb had been traveling prior to the stop. The officers then seemed to play some sort of twisted game in which they used the coin toss phone app to determine if they'd simply release Webb with the citation or take her into custody. Despite not having any evidence that she'd committed a violation, the result of the subsequent coin flip indicated that Webb should be allowed to leave. However, Brown and Wilson decided to apprehend her on charges of speeding and reckless driving anyway. After reporters uncovered the officer's damning body cam video, an internal investigation concluded that Wilson and Brown had failed to perform their duties appropriately on several other previous occasions. Police Chief Rusty Grant signed their termination letter stating their behavior affected the efficiency of the department and destroyed public respect for the force. All charges against Webb were dropped on July the 9th of 2019. Number 5. Rachel Sorkow Las Vegas Police Officer Rachel Sorkow was arrested on five charges of felony misconduct and indecent exposure. On December the 4th of 2018, the 29-year-old had allegedly used state-issued equipment to film and ridicule unsuspecting citizens. During her scornful recordings, Sorkow could be heard using pejorative terms including racial slurs to mock her innocent targets. In one such clip, she reportedly taunted an overweight woman and in another made fun of a mentally ill man while encouraging him to twerk. The most serious allegation against Sorkow involved her filming a suspect's genitals without his knowledge or consent. The investigation into her various wrongdoings was launched in September of 2018 after accusations surfaced that she'd shared classified information with friends and family. During Sorkow's eventual arrest, the hateful body cam recordings were found in her possession and it was also discovered that she'd gone so far as to distribute them among her contacts. The shamed officer was relieved of duty pending the result of her criminal trial. Number 4. Michael Oxford On August the 18th of 2020, Georgia police officer Michael Oxford was recorded violently arresting a young woman after responding to reports of an alleged assault. 22-year-old Kindesia Smith was among the group accused of having thrown a bottle at a neighbor's car and threatening their daughter. However, when questioned, Smith claimed to have only been sitting on her mother's porch with a few friends. Upon arriving at the scene, Oxford first tried to discuss the incident civilly with Smith, but the group she was with became rowdy, demanding that the officer leave them alone. Smith contended that they'd been on private property and hadn't participated in any illegal activities. Undeterred, the officer informed the young woman that she was under arrest and attempted to handcuff her. When Smith resisted, she was tasered, as onlookers recorded the altercation. Following her arrest, she was charged with felony obstruction and simple battery against a police officer. The video of the incident was uploaded to TikTok, gathering more than 19 million views within a few days. The police department subsequently released a statement assuring the public that a thorough investigation was being conducted. Although Oxford claimed to have warned Smith that he'd use force if she continued to resist, his behavior during the arrest was ultimately deemed unacceptable. A couple of days after the incident occurred, he was consequently fired for violating department policy. Number 3. John Horbert John Horbert, a police officer from Aurora, Colorado, was forced to resign in disgrace after body cam footage revealed that he'd used unnecessary force during an arrest. The incident in question took place on July the 23rd of 2021, a week before Horbert ultimately quit his post. The 39-year-old officer had responded to a report of trespassing in progress, but found no one at the address provided during the 911 call. While interviewing three men standing on the sidewalk outside, Horbert stumbled upon the fact that each of them had warrants out for their arrests. 29-year-old Kyle Vinson was the only suspect who didn't attempt to flee, and he seemed wholly unaware that he was wanted by the police, as his own warrant had been issued recently. The recording recovered from the body cam showed the police officer repeatedly pistol-whipping, choking, 
and threatening to shoot the suspect. Vincent could be heard gasping for air during the video and at several points screamed, you are killing me, with a chilling disregard for the man's well-being. Orbit replied that he'd shoot him if he attempted to move. After detectives reviewed the video, the officer was charged with first degree and second degree assault, as well as felony menacing, official oppression, and official misconduct. It was reported that the disgraced officer's former partner, Francine Martinez, who had also been present at the scene, but didn't actively participate in the assault, could face criminal prosecution for failing to intervene or report the incident. Number 2. Mark Eric Eicher Pennsylvania policeman Mark Eicher was working part-time for three separate law enforcement agencies when he suddenly became engulfed in controversy related to abuse allegations. His accusers, identified only by the initials SR and RB, were 22 and 32 respectively when they were reportedly pulled over by ICA on separate occasions during early December of 2018. In both instances, the victims testified that the 29-year-old officer falsely accused them of traffic violations before planting incriminating evidence while searching their cars. Threatening the women with incarceration, ICA would ask the women, how can you help me help you? He then allegedly suggested to trade their release for non-consensual intimate favors. When his perverted misdeeds were brought to light a few weeks later, Ica was arrested and the authorities requested that any other potential victims contact the detectives in charge of the case with their testimonies. Another woman was interviewed and she reportedly accused the officer of handcuffing and fondling her in the back of his cruiser in Lackawanna County back in June of the same year. The unnamed victim indicated that she'd decided not to come forward earlier because she'd been afraid that the police wouldn't believe her. Due to the severity of the charges, Ica's bail was set at $1 million, an exorbitant amount that shocked the defendant's lawyer, who unsuccessfully attempted to appeal the decision. On July the 24th of 2021, Ica pleaded guilty to his crimes, reducing his resulting prison sentence from 20 to 13 years. Judge Malachi E. Mannion rejected the original terms of the deal, however, and instead convicted the man to 15 years behind bars. Number 1. Molly Edwards and Richard Patton An official investigation was launched into the conduct of Sergeant Molly Edwards and Constable Richard Patton after accusations of inappropriate behavior reached officials at the police department in Surrey, England. Edwards and Patton, both of whom were married with children at the time, had allegedly been involved in a romantic affair since July of 2019 and would often fail to respond to radio calls while on duty together. On the night of September the 29th, the officers received two call-outs, one in relation to a burglary at a nearby shop and a second to a serious assault at a hospital merely 15 minutes away from where their squad car was parked. Instead of responding to the scenes of the crimes in progress, however, Patton reportedly said, let's just get naked, as was recorded by audio surveillance devices that had secretly been planted in their vehicle. Transcripts of the ensuing conversation included references to intimate fantasies as well as a collection of lewd noises made by the clandestine law enforcement lovers. When confronted with the evidence, both officers resigned from the force to avoid facing a disciplinary board hearing, but they reportedly escaped any criminal charges in connection to their negligent behavior. Number 6. Eric Kelly As indicated by an internal affairs investigation, a homicide detective for the Memphis Police Department began a romantic relationship with a woman he'd arrested in connection to a killing in 2018. Bridget Stafford, whom documents identified as a gang member, had been charged by Officer Eric Kelly as an accessory after the fact to the 2017 first-degree murder of a man named Robert Glyden. She later told investigators that the policeman, who'd arrested her in April of 2018, had made his intentions known early on. During an interrogation, Kelly reportedly asked Stafford if she was an escort or an exotic dancer gave her his card and told her to call him. A few months later, they began an affair at around the same time that Kelly was promoted to lieutenant. He had two different houses and gave Stafford the keys to his property in Midtown, where she stayed most of the time as Kelly also had a girlfriend at the time. While in his home, 
Stafford had access to his guns and took photos with them, which were later posted online. Kelly helped her get a job as an exotic dancer, then sent her money for the outfits she needed at work. The woman reportedly used some of the cash to buy marijuana. Kelly also used city funds to take her on an out-of-town investigative trip to Alabama, where he was looking into a separate murder case. As an investigation into his relationship with Stafford was in its preliminary stages, Kelly secured his pension by abruptly retiring from the force in November of 2019. The following year, the scandal went public and the 50-year-old faced multiple charges of official misconduct. He admitted to have had an intimate relationship with Stafford, but the investigation found that he hadn't used his position to influence her ongoing case. His actions did, however, damage his credibility and ability to testify in other homicide investigations. To avoid jail time, Kelly eventually accepted a plea deal in 2021, admitting a misdemeanor account of misconduct and agreed never to return to law enforcement. Number 5. Shelby Cornelio Law enforcement in St. Petersburg, Florida, conducted a traffic stop in the early hours of May the 17th of 2022. They identified the driver as 26-year-old Shelby Cornelio, who was a deputy for the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Cornelio exhibited signs of imparity that included slurred speech, bloodshot eyes and being unsteady on her feet. She agreed to field sobriety tests but failed them and officers found that her blood alcohol level was between 0.206 and 0.291, whereas the legal limit in the state was 0.08. Cornelio was charged with driving under the influence and taken to the Pinellas County Jail without incident. She had been working for the Sheriff's Office since 2018 and was part of its Patrol Operations Bureau, but was immediately terminated following her arrest. Number 4. Jason DePrimer in the fall of 2022, Jason DePrimer, the deputy chief of the Cartersville Police Department in Georgia, was visiting Orlando, Florida to attend the annual American Polygraph Association seminar. He didn't take his own vehicle, but one assigned to the department's undercover unit. Upon reaching his destination, 45-year-old DePrimer contacted an escort, whom he found in an ad and agreed to pay $120 for a full service of half an hour. Prior to the conversation, he'd been scammed out of $200 by another alleged escort. She'd asked for the picture of a Cash App card as proof of his ability to pay her, but then used the information he'd provided to take his money. The Primer's second attempt at eliciting escort services would, however, end much worse. The rendezvous took place at an undisclosed location and the police officer brought $180, which was more than the asking price, as well as a pack of White Claw hard seltzer, which he gave to his illicit date. Unbeknownst to De Primer, the Polk County Sheriff's Office was in the midst of its week-long Operation Fall Hall 2, an undercover investigation aimed at finding and rescuing human trafficking victims. The woman he thought was an escort was actually an undercover detective. On September the 1st of 2022, De Primer was arrested for soliciting escort services and was one of 160 people taken into custody during the operation. De Primer, a graduate of the FBI Academy, was a well-respected officer in his community and had been with the Cartersville Police Department for nearly three decades. He was placed on administrative leave following his arrest but ultimately resigned. Number 3. Jeffrey Wharton in 2020, New Mexico police officer Jeffrey Wharton of the Albuquerque Police Department unleashed a brutal attack on his girlfriend. Part of the assault was caught on the ring doorbell camera of the couple's Rio Rancho residence, and it showed Wharton placing the woman in a chokehold and dragging her into their home. She had to be hospitalized after being beaten so badly that she suffered a brain hemorrhage and multiple facial injuries. When Wharton showed up for his shift, on February the 22nd, other officers informed him that they had a domestic violence warrant for him before placing him under arrest in a body cam recorded incident. A female officer removed his service weapon, gun belt and gear in what was interpreted by the media as the department underlining the embarrassment that Wharton had become for the force, his uniform was cut off his body with scissors while he was handcuffed. He was then escorted to a cruiser and taken to jail, where he'd spend the following six months as his trial unfolded. Wharton ultimately admitted aggravated battery and was speared for the jail time after being given three years probation. Number 2. Mikhail Popkov 
Based on the confessions made following his arrest, former police officer Mikhail Popkov is often regarded as Russia's most prolific serial killer. He was mainly active from 1992 to 2010 in his home city of Angarsk and the wider Irkutsk region in Siberia. Popkov preyed on his victims, all but one of whom were women, while wearing his official uniform and offering to give them lifts in his car late at night. The fact that he was a member of law enforcement played a significant role in him gaining their trust. He reportedly chose women whom he considered immoral and who physically resembled his alcoholic mother, who'd abused him as a child. Popkov drove the victims to remote locations where he forced them to undress. He then attacked them in extremely brutal fashion, using a variety of tools that included knives, axes, screwdrivers or baseball bats. Popkov then had relations with the victims as they were dying or after they were dead before extensively mutilating their remains. He decapitated at least one of them and gouged another's heart out, which led to him being known as the werewolf. At home, the police officer was described as the perfect husband and father. His wife, Elena, was also a member of law enforcement and while not believed to have been an accomplice, gave alibis for Popkov on several occasions when suspicions for the gruesome murders focused on him. One of the serial killer's surviving victims named as Svetlana M clearly identified him as the police officer who'd abducted and abused her in January of 1998. Popkov forced Svetlana, who was then in her teens, to take off her clothes and then smashed her head against a tree, rendering her unconscious. In spite of being left for dead in sub-zero temperatures, the teen survived and subsequently accused him. Elena made up an alibi for her husband and the case was archived, but Svetlana's testimony would provide a vital basis for the investigative efforts that followed. Popkov had eluded the authorities for nearly two decades before a combination of factors led to his arrest in 2012. The authorities had found tracks from a Lada 4x4, an off-road vehicle used by the police at numerous crime scenes following a massive DNA testing operation of Irkutsk police officers Popkov was a match for genetic material recovered from several victims. Following his arrest, he revealed that he committed the first murder on impulse, saying, I just felt I wanted to kill a woman. I was given a lift to in my car. He was given a life sentence in 2015 for 22 murders and two attempted murders. The following year, he confessed to 59 additional killings, 56 of which were confirmed, and he received a second life sentence. In July of 2020, Popkov then, in his mid-50s, revealed he'd been responsible for two more killings, bringing his total number of admitted victims to 83. Number 1. Kevin Rodriguez North Carolina police officer Kevin Rodriguez, aged 33, was arrested by his Raleigh colleagues in February of 2022 after being caught selling cocaine while on duty. The investigation had begun in November of the previous year when confidential sources tipped local law enforcement and the Drug Enforcement Agency that Rodriguez was a dealer. An informant then arranged to meet him for a transaction on January the 24th of 2022. According to a criminal complaint, Rodriguez arrived in uniform and with his duty firearm while driving a marked Raleigh patrol car. He was reported to have turned over 56 grams of cocaine in exchange for $2,600 in cash. The police officer was arrested on charges of drug distribution and possession of a firearm in a drug trafficking crime. At the time, he held the rank of field operations officer but was suspended without pay as an internal affairs investigation was underway. For his crimes, Rodriguez faced a minimum of five years in prison and a maximum of life in prison. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have no police in your neighborhood or have a day every year when all crime was legal? Let us know in the comments section below.